Peter Aldous. Thank you, Dr. Huck. It's a pleasure to serve with you in the chair, and I congratulate my honourable friend, the member for Stoke-on-Trent North, for securing this debate, which is well synchronised with my right honourable friend, the Chancellor's autumn statement. Dr. Huck, if we are to unleash sustained economic growth and enhanced productivity, we need a fully functioning labour market. This requires an entry system that both enables people to pursue their chosen career paths and opens up opportunities in sectors that are vital to our future economic prosperity, such as low carbon energy on the East Anglian coast. A vitally important means of achieving this goal is through the apprenticeship levy which the government introduced in 2017 as part of a package of reforms of the apprenticeship system. These measures were rightly ambitious, and they were based on two principles. Firstly, for apprenticeships to succeed, they must have a long-term sustainable funding source. And secondly, they must be rigorous so as to gain the confidence of both employers and learners. The apprenticeship levy is designed to deliver the first of these objectives. Six years on, I think that we can say that the levy is here to stay, but it has had a challenging start and it has had to go through a great deal, including COVID, the consequences of the war in Ukraine and the cost of living crisis. There have also been some outcomes which were neither intended nor foreseen. Now is the time to pause and to refine the system. The Association of Colleges, who provide the Secretariat to the APPG on Further Education and Lifelong Learning, which I chair, have identified the following challenges. There's been a dramatic decline in the number of people undertaking apprenticeships in recent years. This is now down to 60,000 young people starting apprenticeships each year. In the past six years, we have lost 160,000 engineering and manufacturing apprenticeship training places at a time that these sectors are crying out for more staff. The levy has been very successful in creating higher level apprenticeships in larger firms but there is also a need to provide apprenticeship opportunities for younger people and new labour market entrants. Many small businesses, as we have heard, are put off by the bureaucracy. Local schools improvement plans provide an appropriate local framework for meeting the needs of local labour markets, but there is a need for a national strategy so as to address such challenges as the technical skills gaps at levels four and five. There is a worry, Dr. Huck, that the budget allocated by the Treasury is nearly full, nearly fully committed, though as I, I accept, as we have heard, that it is not necessarily all being spent. There is a need to consider how to either increase the levy, maintain growth through the existing funding, through the existing funding, such as by reforming the transfer, transfer mechanism, or look for savings that won't impact on quality. As to how to improve the system, there should be a focus on new job starters and consideration should be given to, refor to returning to the recommendations of the 2012 government review, which stated that an apprenticeship should be redefined, clearly targeted at and promoted to those who are new to a, job, to a job or role that requires sustained or substantial training. In addition, the following technical changes as to how the apprenticeship levy operates should be given full consideration. Firstly, there is a sense among some in industry that the two-year expiration on levy funds is, in, in, is inadvertently encouraging the adoption of a spend it or lose it mentality, leading to rushed financial decisions rather than strategic workforce development. A more nuanced, flexible approach is needed. 
Extending the expiration period could encourage more thoughtful expenditure, aligning training initiatives with long-term business strategies. Secondly, I am receiving feedback that the apprenticeship minimum duration requirements are too rigid. The 12-month minimum length of apprenticeship, while suitable for some programmes, does not necessarily align with the operational demands of others. We need a more flexible approach to minimum length requirements that enables better tailoring of apprenticeships to specific job roles and industry needs. Thirdly, poor retention rates in apprenticeships require attention, as we have heard. High dropout rates would appear to be due to a combination of factors, including the apprenticeship wage structure and a lack of clear progression pathways. Some have argued that increasing the apprenticeship minimum wage could help by providing financial stability and demonstrating to, apprenticeship, to apprentices the value of their contributions, thereby enhancing job satisfaction and increasing commitment. This is an option, Dr Huck, that, among many others, the government should consider so as to improve retention rates. In conclusion, the... 2017 apprenticeship reforms, including the introduction of levy, were good ones. However, the economic landscape, both in the UK and globally, is rapidly changing. There is a need to listen, to adapt, and to refine. This refinement is not just about making minor tweaks. It is about ensuring that our apprenticeship system remains relevant, responsive, and effective. If we do this, people, whatever their backgrounds, will be able to realise their ambitions and to fulfil their potential. And in addition, the UK economy will be able to motor forward in fifth gear and not third. Thank you, Dr. Huck. Dr. Therese Coffey.